organically that stutter was crazy but and organically so you don't have to lose your audience when it's time for you to be yourself you know what i'm saying why not just start off being yourself grow slow and then you'll never have to you know how when people you, I, I know y'all heard that saying before what was it called you'll never have to work a day in your life if if you're having fun i don't know it's, it didn't sound that cringe i forgot what it was bro it was like it was like if you enjoy your job, then you'll never have to work a day in your life or something like that. I know y'all heard that along the lines. Of, I, I know y'all heard that before. But like, real rap though, man. That's actually facts. You know what I'm saying? These streamers get burnt out in the first year, year and a half, maybe even two years of them making content, and then they just fall out of love with it because they want to be themselves, finally. And once they be themselves, that's when the fall off comes and the views start dropping. You know why there's, you know why you fell off and the views start dropping? because he's finally being himself. What he did was he clip farmed like how Jason the Wing says you're supposed to do and all these other big ass streamers. Clip farmed his way to the top, got a whole bunch of fans and they see that fake version of him. I already made a video on this, you know? And before I continue, I know y'all bro. Y'all be in the comments talking about, you talk about the same shit. Hell yeah, I'm gonna talk about the same fucking shit, man. It's annoying. I'm, I'm gonna keep bitching. I literally made this channel to bitch about this. Like mostly content creating like related things because I, if, if I'm gonna complain, I, listen, I've been complaining and bitching my entire life, bro. You know what I'm saying? Why not get paid for it? Why not get an audience and get paid for it? You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna keep bitching. Shut up. I'm not gonna stop bitching about the same topics. On God. Anyways. Let me know what y'all think is the smarter decision. Do you think you should fake your way to the top and get a whole bunch of quickie quickie? Or should you go my route, be organic and grow your fan base the natural way, the authentic way, the genuine way? You, you wanna tussle? You wanna tussle? I don't, I don't have any underwear on under these shorts. Well, here's my main thing about it. So the premise of the whole video was him talking about Jason Ween. You don't know who that is. That's a YouTuber who I think became the number two top streamer or something like that. I spoke about him a couple videos ago when I was talking about somebody who was talking about him when it came to podcasting and they said that he only got big because of clips and he only has 15,000 viewers um, a video. And I actually defended Jason. I said, you're, you're on a random podcast, you're getting two to three views, and talking about somebody who makes 15,000 views. Ha. Okay, so let me talk about growing slowly, and also, if you need the clip form or anything like that. And this is why I say content creation will assure you. Here's the problem. Content creation is so fucking difficult that you, you, you because you, if you're doing it for a long time, you're going to grow into a different person as life goes on. I saw a comment the other day that said, I wonder what YouTubers are like when the camera goes off. We're normal people. That's the hard part about being a content creator. It's though it can be fun. And like he says, I'm just like him. We do a lot of yapping. And we're going to watch a few more clips from him in a second. But yeah, I like to do a lot of yapping. I do I like to do a lot of talking. So this part comes easy for me. But the growing and having to create the YouTube shorts or TikToks, just just not me. I, I don't even care if somebody took my content and just made their own clips off of it. And did whatever they wanted with it. Like, it wouldn't bother me that much because I don't like to do that anyway. But the whole thing, look, there's always going to be people who are not going to be uh, not authentic and who only get into YouTube for money. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really care. For people who want to get into content creation for money, hey, go ahead and do it. Now, if you're a person who <laughs> wants to get into content creation and then you want to last you know, and it's going to sound kind of weird to say, but there's an old so there's an old song that I remember talking about, say, uh, it's an old song that said, only real music's going to last. All that other bullshit will be here today and gone tomorrow. If you want to last in this industry, bro, it's going to take time. It's, you, you are going to have to grow authentically. I've been in it for a long time, and I ain't got a lot of subscribers, um, but I got a lot of videos, and I always have a, a large catalog to look back on. You know, it's hard because, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but 
there is a mental stress that comes with it because you know you can't never take a break from YouTube. Uh, there's just too many content creators. Now, I say that. Now, it depends on who you are. It depends on your content. Because the Danny Gonzalez's, the Chad Chad, the, the bread tubers, they don't need, they could take a break and come back and pop up five, six million views easy. Um, because their content is made for that. Their content is always going to garner people because they've been around for so long. So it's not that you can't take a break. It's just us people like such as myself. I'm a live streamer. Other live streamers, you it's hard. You can't be a live streamer and take breaks. You can't be a live stream one day, be gone for a month, live stream, be gone for a month. You can't even live stream, be gone for a couple weeks, live stream, be gone for a couple weeks. Even if you've been streaming, even if you stream eight, nine hours a day, you can't just disappear. Now, what I have seen work is somebody might live stream 16, 17 days in a row, right? Eight hour live streams. I've seen people do eight, nine, 10 hour live streams for like 16 days in a row and then take a break, come back, do that again. That's a model that I feel like could be sustainable for 16 days out of the month. You crack out, you crank out 16 days, get your eight hours in all the 60 days and then be gone for a month or two. <laughs> come back. But to be fair, it depends on what your content is about. For people who do lawyer content, who watch uh, trials and stuff like that, that will be perfect for you because you can't, it's kind of hard to go back to back to back trials. But if you watch a whole trial that lasts a year, right? The trial happens for 10 days, it gets scrapped, comes back 10 days, scrapped 10 days. You do that for six, seven months, you're getting a big break, but you're also following the whole trial. So guess what? When people will ever want to go back and watch Let's say the Young Thug trial that just finished up. When somebody wants to go watch that, they'll find your channel and they'll be able to watch the entire trial should they want to, especially if they're law students or something like that. And they get to hear your perspective as a, well, if you're a lawyer, they get to hear your perspective if you're a lawyer or your perspective if you're somebody who actually works in the legal field and you understand what's going on. All right. It's the same thing we see what happens with doctors. Doctors who make content that are pushing towards injury and stuff like that, they're there and gone. They're and gone. So, Saya is going to talk a lot about content creation. It feels like you can never take a break. You absolutely could take a break from content creation. You just, you have to know how to do it. I took a break from content creation and did it the wrong way. Um, but I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it the same way again. What I did is I waited until I fell apart to take a break. You can't do that. You can't wait until your life is in shambles and then take a break. <laughs> You need to have a scheduled break in. Uh, and don't tell the people. Like, I won't tell you guys when I take a break. You'll just see live streams. And you'll see videos still popping out, but I'll be gone. Um, just like I did right before I came back. You guys, I think I put out 10, 10 videos, 10, 11 videos, and I wasn't even making videos. I was gone. Wasn't even on the platform. But I, I pre-recorded those, and I just chunked them all out there, and then I came back. Um, Should have did that in the first place, but I didn't. But... Nonetheless, I think that's what's uh, important when it comes to content creation and <sighs> being yourself is so easy to say when it comes to content creation. But no matter what you do, we all have to put on a character. <sighs> if I can't really get on here and be myself, I don't want to be myself all the time. I don't want to get on here and be like, hey, guys, it's your fat broke guy again. Who the fuck wants to be that? We all want to get on here and either act like we're wiser than we are, smarter than we are, fitter than we are. We want to act happier than we are. We all put on a face. I don't care who you are as a content creator. You can be as real as you want to be. But to say that you're an authentic YouTuber or to say, oh, I'm as real as they come. It's like, man, I'm as real as I can be. I can't get on here and say everything about my fucking life because I have people in my life that I can't talk about. I can't tell y'all everything about what's going on in my family life. I can tell you what's going on in my, my friend's life. I can't be completely authentic. I can be as close as I can to being myself on here. But I can't just straight be honest about everything. So when people talk about being yourself, it's like, what does that even mean? Because it's hard to be myself in my own life. You know what I mean? I try to be myself, but even when you're around people, you are somewhat of a character of yourself. 
when you're around a certain person, if you're at your job and you're around your boss, you're going to act differently than if you're around your friends. And if you're, you may act differently around your friends than you do with your family. So being yourself is just, it's impossible because we're all different to different people. And so when I'm on this camera, as much as I want to try to be myself, I don't even know what that means. Because my true self that I would like to be, I would like to be somebody who's not fat. But if I get on here every day and say, oh my God, I'm still fat. I'm struggling today. Are you motherfuckers going to want to hear that every single day? No. So I got to pick topics to talk about. I got to work around being myself. So I do agree with Sia when he says, be your authentic self. You will last longer as a content creator. But I want to make sure when we say be yourself, I mean, be as close as you can to yourself. Once again, we are all going to play some kind of character on the camera, you know, and that's just what it is. The best time that I'm as close as I am to myself is when I go into my overtime mode when I'm streaming, which is one of the reasons I don't like making videos outside of live streams, because in videos, I am way more critical of myself and I will do 18 different takes of me saying something. When I have to live stream, the light's on, baby, and I, I can be as close as I can to myself because I can't edit it. I can't go back and say, hey, guys, this is Trachelope, and be like, oh, man, I messed it up. Click. Hey, guys, this is... that nah, I didn't like that. Hey, guys, this is Trey. You know, I can't change my voice. If the mic messes up, if my video freezes, I just got to keep it moving. That's the beautiful thing about live streaming. This is the closest I can to being myself. But no, none of us could all be completely authentically ourselves. Because you know, if we all did that, you'd be bored with watching us. It doesn't matter what it is, bro. If anything is trending, people are going to dick ride it. It doesn't matter what it is. They're going to do it because everybody else is doing it. I prom listen to me. Now, I'm going to try not to swipe my entire setup off my desk when I say this, right? But I was just chilling yesterday. One of my supporters DM me on Instagram and they say, Saya, I hop two of you. I was like, that's disgusting. What are you talking about? It was like, what do you mean? I was like, do, do, you, even, do you even know what that means? They was like, no, I just seen it on TikTok. <sighs> oh my God. Like, oh, like it, could be a, it could be a trend to have like the blueprints of Never mind. <laughs> it could be it could be a trend to go in the kitchen and grab your mom's ass. Okay, all right. Let's you you get the point, man. If it's blowing up, everybody's gonna do it. If it's trending and it's getting views, everybody's gonna do it. Everybody's gonna talk about it. Why are you not listening? Why are you not listening? Why are you thinking for yourself? Be your own f***ing person! I went live and somebody just said it in my chat randomly with no context. It doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in the stream right now. I seen a goaded legendary comment on this channel right here on one of my videos. I think it was, I, it might have been the last one or the one before or something like that. I don't know. It was one of those videos, but somebody said, what doesn't piss this guy off? <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out for 22 years! I don't know, man. I don't know. Every, everybody gets me mad. Life gets me mad. Everything pisses me the f off. I don't, I don't, I don't like anything. <sighs> and it's gonna sound like I'm saying this from a boober take, but I want to talk to the people who are a little bit older than 20. And I, cause I can't talk from the perspective of a 20 year old. You'll get over it, Sia. Um, when it comes to content creation, you get real pissed off in the very beginning. When you're a young person, you feel like you're thinking differently than every other 20 year old. But I, I can tell you now, now that when I talk to 20 year olds and I talk to a bunch of them, pretty much all think the same. Even the ones who come up to my face and say, well, I think that the world is screwed and I, I'm so much more mature for my age and not. No, you're not. To be honest with you, the way that this young man thinks is not much differently than how most 20 year olds think. He's in that perfect age where he feels like you're breaking out of the matrix, but you're also still in it very much so. Um, so he's not really saying anything that's profound to me. However, let's address it still because he is speaking from an, an, another, a unique place of somebody who has gone viral. Um, and he, has, he can speak from a place of somebody who is a content creator. Okay. So when you're a content creator, you kind of get stuck in this world of 
man, I can't believe that people wanted to listen to Haley Welch, the Hot Tour Girl. Oh, I can't believe people are blowing up on 20 versus 1. Oh my God, I can't believe that this person blows up because they talk about booty all day. I can't believe all... <sighs> Once again, content creation is going to destroy you guys. If you can't get out of the comment section, let it go. Let it go. It is very hard to do that, though. I completely understand that it's hard not to want to be above or be different than everybody. At the same time, a lot of us are the same. That's the hard thing also about being a content creator is you feel unique, but you really. OK, let's get let's get real for a second. Let's uh, let's uh, break this down. I'm going to bring this just for my friend, you know, Chris Smooth. I'm about to bring this so everybody can hear me. All the way downtown. I want you guys to hear me, okay? And I know it's going to be a little bit harsh, but that's why I played this song at the beginning that, please don't talk to me that way. Motherfucker, you're not special. Oh my gosh. You're not. Every one of you guys who get out here and talk about, oh, I'm a different kind of content creator because I keep it real. Or I'm a different kind of content creator because I don't give in to the TikTok bullshit. I'm a real content creator because I don't do all that extra stuff. I don't get caught up in the brain rot. Oh, I notice that there's brain rot. Or I don't watch girls' booties. I don't watch I don't watch this kind of content. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Hey, look, look, motherfucker. There's a lot of people who do what you do. They just don't create content. I hope you know that. Just because you're a content creator doesn't mean that there's not people who are exactly like you, but they do it in different capacities. Some people don't speak on camera. They speak in front of their community. Some people work for the board at their local schools. Some people work for the board at the whole damn city. There are people who are the mayors. There are people who work underneath them that you have no idea who they are. Okay? There are people who are speaking... <coughs> voice crack. There are people who are speaking politically that you will never know anything about. There are people who are out there really raising their voices, really trying to give to the charity, really marching the streets that you don't know about, that aren't into the brain rot, that aren't watching TikToks, that aren't watching YouTube, that aren't caught up in the social media at all. They don't know what it really means to be a part of it. They show up to market maybe, and that's it. Most people aren't really con really creating content. I know a few streamers, okay? And, and in real life, they ain't doing no marching in the streets. They ain't talking about the community. They ain't helping the community. These are just regular old people who would get on streams and be like, yay, you know, fuck the make, fuck this, fuck that. And it's like, bro, you don't do anything outside of this camera, though. Now, to be fair, the camera can have a lot of influence. You can be a big influencer on YouTube or streaming or Instagram or whatever. However, it takes a while to kind of humble yourself and I'm, when I'm talking, I'm not really pushing back on sight. Okay? I'm simply saying that there are people who may not know that Saya is also somewhat of a character. He may be really talking his mind, but he's playing up to the entertainment. I know this man is brighter than what he talks about. I'm sure he knows plenty of people who are in the streets really doing real work and all that kind of stuff. Okay? The people he is trying to talk to is not necessarily people... He's not trying to say he's better than anybody. What Saya is trying to get across is that he's just trying to reach that small population that's ready to make that turn. And I commend him for it because his videos, even though they may not show millions of views, they are really impacting the people who are his age that are younger. There's going to be some a few young men out there who are like, you know what? I do get caught up in the, the brain rot. I do get caught up in this stuff. And so he's helping the people. I have an issue with the people who can't see that. So I want to make sure that I'm also talking to you people who do get on your soapbox a lot and it's not a character for you. You're not really trying to help nobody. You're actually a narcissist, a narcissist, or you're not a narcissist. You're just a person who's very, very entitled. You're very, very um, on your moral high horse. I like saying that the most. It's so easy to get on your moral high horse when you're a content creator. Because you really think that you think differently than a lot of people. And you just don't. And when that reality comes to your mind. Because here's what's going to happen. Okay. I don't care what who you are the content creator. If you think you're the best at what you do. You're fooling yourself. Okay. For the people who are the biggest at what they do. They don't talk about it. They won't know about it. They, don't, they just keep moving forward. But you're going to create content one day. And I hope and I pray you go viral. I pray you go from zero subs or 100 subs 
to 10,000, to 100,000, to 500,000 subs, to a million subs. But you guess what? You're going to think that you're at the top of the mountain and there's going to be somebody you ain't never heard of who in six months will pass you in subscribers when they had less than you six months ago. You're going to think you made it and then somebody's going to do the same thing you did or close to it and blow right past your ass. Can you imagine all? Because <laughs> some people think that they're so special at what they do that they can't be passed up until Cristiano Ronaldo shows up on YouTube and he gets 30 plus million in like a week. <laughs> and you've been working your whole life just to get to 100,000. And you think you're just as big as him. I'm not saying <laughs> that some people are mm, stupid. I am saying that it is easy to get Disillusion. It's easily to be delusional and think that you're on the same level as certain people or that you can't be passed by the newest, hottest thing on the streets. There are people who are, there's somebody right now making shorts. There's somebody right now making content. And you're looking down on them because they ain't got a lot of subs. And before you blink, next year they'll be past you in subs, past you in engagement. Next thing you know, you might be seeing them on some kind of commercial. And then you'll, you'll never, you and then they'll pass you and they'll never look back at you ever again. It doesn't mean you suck as a content creator, but it does mean sometimes you got to get your ass spanked. Okay, sometimes you got to get humbled. Okay, and be like, hey, I'm not that special. I saw another content creator who was talking about, um, I've been treating YouTube as a job and I need to make it fun. No. Mother, and I, I, I'm tired of having to say this. You know what? You know what? I was in a relaxing mood, but we got we got to turn it up a little bit. We got to turn it up just a little bit. Give me a second. We got we got to go into um. What what do the uh, people say when they're pissed off? I, I I see red. Let's go. Let's go ahead and do that. Let him cook. We're, we're let in him a cook kind of mood now. now. Let him cook. I said let him. What if I had a cool edit right there? That'd have been funny, man. But it is not. I wish you the best when it comes to content creation. But it will destroy the vast majority of y'all. It destroyed me. And I can talk like a fucking train on the track that will never stop. I will talk for the rest of my days. I have to shut up in front of people. One of the reasons I started YouTube in the first place is because I talk too much. And so I said, I need to get somewhere where I can maybe make a few shekels. No, nah, I didn't think about that. I just got on camera because like, maybe yeah, I just talked to the void. And that's what I do most of the time. But you people, <clears throat> stop saying that YouTube shouldn't be treated like a job. Because if you only do this for fun, you people bitch the most. For you people who always going to say, I just do YouTube for, for fun. All y'all ever do is bitch about the numbers and the views and all of that stuff. Y'all are the laziest content creators most of the time because you do it for fun. Because you're not even disciplined to really get on here. You get on here and make something stupid and then say, I just do it for fun. And then when the views aren't there, you bitch. Listen, it can be fun and you can be try to be better at your craft. You don't have to get on here and just talk about goofy shit all the time. You can have a real purpose. Now, I can get on here. <clears throat> the reason, and I'm not saying that I'm special, but one of the reasons I updated my, my setup, when I used to do content creation in the very beginning, I used to not give a fuck. I really didn't. I really didn't. I used to do it for funsy, and I would do it with the most horrible lighting, and I would do it in a closet with the most horrible audio, and I just upload that shit. And it, it's so echoey. You can hear air conditioners running in the background and all that. But here's the problem. If you think people want to watch that shit, you're confusing yourself. You can have fun on YouTube and also treat it like a job or at least care about it. I'm not saying if you, I'm not saying you have to have the world's best studio. Do the best that you can. I'm doing the best that I can. I don't have the world's best studio. But best believe the more money I make, and if I have the ability to upgrade, I will. It's not because I care about, oh, man, I got to look best for the camera. I care about how I present it. I know if I present it better, I can get to a bigger audience because of how it looks. 
That's just how it goes, guys. That's the same reason you watch music videos. Same reason you watch your certain TV shows. That's why you watch your certain shows on Netflix. That's why you're attracted to certain people. Presentations, everything. You know people who just show up for fun in life. Okay? Those are the worst people to be around because they bitch too much. The people who come to work who are like, oh, man, I just do this for fun. You know, you know what I mean? The people who just show up to work don't even try to do their job. I'm not saying you got to love it to death, but damn it, you can try because if you work, we, it makes it easier on all of us. But if you come to work and waste time, my job is harder now. And damn it, I don't want you to work here no more. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I just get sick of the people who say don't treat it like a job. I get that. But don't just get on here and try to just have fun and, and then bitch about the numbers. If you want to get on YouTube and have fun, and then don't give a fuck about if you ever grow. If you ever see numbers, if you ever make it, that's fine. That's fine. But I think even myself, I have to care about the numbers a little bit. I have to be like, what can I improve so I can reach more people? Because I can't just keep my content shit. I do need to mix it up. Every every person needs to do that. I don't have a goal number that I'm trying to get to subwise, but I do want to see the number go up as far as views and engagement just so I can see, okay, that's what the people want to hear. How do I take that, what people want to hear? And, and put it into a message that can actually help people. Okay, if, if I want to talk about TikTok thoughts, even though I don't really want to talk about TikTok thoughts, TikTok thoughts, I can take that and be like, hey, how can I help young men who are obsessed with looking at a girl clap her cheeks? Now, see, I said that in a funny way. I don't have to get on here and be all serious about it every single time. I don't have to get on here and be like, listen, if you're looking at pornography... You're evil. You're disgusting. I can get on here and say, oh, you like to watch girl clap their cheeks? Well, baby, you need to stop watching babies clap their cheeks. Take your right hand and put it to work instead of... You know where I'm going. Even 20, 40, 50,000 subs. I'm talking about like 100K and above. Like you live off of this and you've been living off of this for a couple of years now. Types, type subscribers. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like you have over 50 million views on just one platform alone. I'm talking about just, you've entertained tens of millions of people and you just have constant pressure on you all the time to stay afloat or else you're gonna fall off. You know what I'm saying? I'm speaking for every content creator out there, successful and the ones that are washed. You, you get what I'm saying? I don't like to use that fell off or washed term because that's really what we're getting into today. It's content creators don't like, yes, they might fall off statistics wise, but it's not their fault. I keep trying to tell people it's this algorithm, bro. This and this, this algorithm, this is like 85%, like, yeah, like 85% of your mental stress of being a successful YouTuber, right? So hear me out. Keeping up with topics, and we're just going to start light. Keeping up with topics and keeping up with your competitors. Everybody's a tryhard now. It doesn't matter if you're breathing. I know you've seen the TikToks. Like, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Which, which is fine. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to work as hard as you possibly can for your craft. I don't got a problem with that. But it's just, if you aren't, like, topping First of all, if you if you're not topping your last video, bro, algorithm's gonna think if you're not topping your last video, if you're not topping your competitors, uh, and your video even flops just a little bit, the algorithm's gonna make your video. They're gonna not recommend your content to your subscribers and to the people that they usually recommend your content to. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm talking about, but like, you have to like always be number one and if you fall off like not not fall off if you stagnate just a little bit the algorithm's gonna think that your subscribers don't care about your content anymore i want to get into that real quick subscribers don't matter i didn't like i just realized that just past year man like it's the algorithm dude subscribers don't really matter dude if you blow up and you get a whole bunch of subs if you're not on top of your shit, 
And even if you try to take a mental break, and we're going to get into that in a minute, but if you're not on top of your shit and, you, and your video flops, they're going to slowly but surely like stop recommending your content to your subs until you fight your way back to that algorithm. And, and then when, once you're at that point where you can't anymore and they're literally just, they just put like an obsidian block on, like on top of you, you just literally just can't dig out of that. Like you're, you're, you're done, man. You might as well just stop, brody. Uh, I'm not going to push too much because he talks about a mental break, but I've already kind of hit that. So there's no point in watching that part. You can go watch the video if you want to. It's about 26 minutes, but we're not done here. Here's the hard part, guys. I'm trying to be nice, but I'm just, it's sometimes frustrating because I'm not a dude who has a lot of subscribers. I'm not a dude who gets a lot of views, but even I try not to bitch so much. Um, I'm not saying he is. I, we're, we're using the idea that he's putting out there. He's obviously a successful content creator, so I'm not saying anything towards him. But I want to say this. For the people who are going to come into this new, who are seeing his video for the first time. By the way, we're, we're relaxed right now. We're relaxed. We're, we're out of that. Um, where the fuck did my... Oh. But we got to get to the point where... We got to get to the point where... <clears throat> guys, you're just going to have to compete. It just is what it is. Okay? It just is what it is. You're going to have to learn to compete. And all the bitching and moaning won't just... It won't get you anywhere. If the algorithm... And I'm going to be honest with you. I used to be... I've never been quite believable in the algorithm. Because I've watched people who have been demonetized. I've watched people who get shadow banned. And YouTube can't do anything to stop their numbers from going up. They'll put out a video and get a million views in three hours, even though they're demonetized. Um, I don't think you, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. And I told you guys I was going to stop running away from evil, good and evil. But if you're doing good in the world, I truly believe there'll be nothing that can stop you. Yeah, exactly. He was uh, somebody had said that if you, you if you don't put any effort, you can't expect the handout later. Listen, if if you're doing good in the world, I mean real good. I don't mean you, you pet cats every now and then, or you go to the uh, your your local uh, you, you go walk some dogs at the local adoption. I'm not saying no things are bad, but I'm talking about when some people when you're willing to. Go all in on whatever you believe your truth is. And I know we don't all have the same truth. I get that. But if you don't, but if you don't go in with the mindset of I'm going to be as close as I can to authentic, but also I'm just going to tell the truth the best I can. You'll be fine. There are a lot of people on YouTube who have gone against the grain, who talk about what they believe good and evil is, and they get demonetized. But they are still getting support view wise, number wise. And that helps them because these people who are getting these views and everything, they're going to eventually go to their own website. Eventually, they'll give you something here on YouTube because it, here's one thing I want to say. Also, if you're a content creator, you got to play the game a little bit. Um, if you get demonetized for speaking your truth, as long as it's not pure evil, keep going with it. And then eventually you're going to have to go to your own website or go somewhere else if you want to monetize it. However, don't ever leave this platform. YouTube is too big for you to just walk away. Even if you think YouTube is ass or they're hypocritical or they only push booty cheeks or they only push people who do pranks or they only push evil stuff. Fine. That's fine. You keep being the light or whatever that is for you. You keep being the good that you want to be. You'll still be able to reach people, but you just aren't going to be able to monetize it here. Find other ways to monetize yourself, whether that be, you know, sometimes you got to sell merch. Sometimes you do get people to go to your website. Just be like, hey, guys, if you want to see the uncensored version of this, go to my website. We'll have it there. Guys, and I know what you guys are thinking. Well, I can't do that. I'm not going to make that much. Listen, when it comes to conversion rate, if you're getting 2 million views, if you're getting 10 million views a month, if you can just get a 2% conversion rate, you'll be doing okay monetarily not including people who may want you to come speak for their school or speak at their university or speak at their event if you're a speaker 
If you're somebody who does other stuff like art and anything, people will want to invite you because you stuck to what you believe, regardless that they even agree with you. You're going to be big. You're going to get invited on other platforms to talk because people be like, hey, this person may not, I might not agree with them, but motherfucker, they, they stick with what they're talking about. That's one of the problems I had. I got so scared to talk about the truth. I, I, I don't care about being demonetized. I really don't. But what I do care about is people not liking me. Oh, oh my God, that hurts. Oh, my gosh. I know. It sounds like I'm so foolish to say that. But it's true. It's, it's hard to not want to be like, man, I just want people to enjoy my content. I don't feel like not every day you wake up and you feel like you want to go to war. Not every day you want to wake up and be like, oh, my God, I got to listen to these fucking comments about, oh, my God, the God doesn't exist. Or, oh, my God, you're just being stupid or you're dumb or blah, 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 blah. So it's hard to go against the grain. But for but it, I, I say, if you truly want to make it, number one, you need to, and we're gonna we're about to go into this. I told you this one's gonna be a long stream. Option today, yesterday I left y'all hanging, and I'm pissed off about it yesterday. Yesterday I left y'all hanging by giving y'all a one hour stream. I'm pissed off that I did that. I'm not gonna do that today. Yesterday I wasn't prepared. Today I am. So y'all gonna get a long ass stream and it's gonna be a long ass video. But anyway. If you want to be good at your craft, even if you believe what you're saying is gonna get shadow banned, if you and I if you put in the work, see that's what some of people do. Even people who are religious, I'm talking Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, whatever. Sometimes y'all can be so reliant or make being religious an excuse that y'all use that as an excuse not to work hard. Okay? It's an excuse. Okay? I always go back to myself. I can get on here and tell you guys how disciplined and how much I love God and everything, but I'm still obese. So I, there's a, I still need to put in the work. So that's a problem of mine and a flaw of mine. And that's something I always have to acknowledge. I want you guys to do the same thing when it comes to content creation. When you say that you're trying your best to get out a message, whatever that may be, whatever you're trying to defend, are you putting in the work? Is your presentation good? Is it something that people can, because when you get, when you get compared to somebody who is maybe speaking evil or doing evil things, or you're getting or, or you're getting compared to what you would call a thought or somebody you believe that is click farming or somebody you don't think is somebody you don't believe is actually in this for real to help people. If their content looks better than yours, more professional than yours, I'm not saying you can always keep up because there's a lot of money in the world. And so you can't always keep up. But if you can't like I'm not saying you have to get to the highest, but if you can get close to somebody who is in your level range right there. You need to be able to show your work. You need to be working just as hard as them. That's why I talk about image being everything. One of the reasons I believe that I could really be a better content creator is by getting in shape. Because if I can talk about, hey, look at the production value. It ain't the best, but it looks good. I got a good mic. I try to be clear. I try to give a good presentation. And I stay in shape. I work out. When you can put all your disciplines together, and it may take some time, especially if you're, you know, got flaws. But if you can be compared to somebody else and your work looks just as good as theirs, I promise you people are going to watch you. People are going to listen to you. Even if they disagree with you, they'll be like, I mean, look at the, the value in the production. Look, and here's another one. Look at the consistency some people believe that you can get on YouTube too much. I see comments sometimes that'll be like, wow, you upload way too much. Man, there's too many videos. And the only time I would ever say that you're uploading too much is that every video you upload is just trash. There's a difference between uploading a video and you're really talking passionately about something that's important to you. And you're trying to push something. It's way different if you're just throwing clips in people's faces and they really have no merit or they have they it shows that you put no effort in. You're simply just putting videos out. I'm not going to name any content creators, but I know content creators who just put out videos and you can tell the effort is low now. They went from this high effort videos to now it's just them sitting on a couch. It's like, 
you can't go from this and then now you're just pumping out content, but it doesn't look good. Then people stop watching you. I've watched somebody who has a million subs. Their videos get like 4,000 views now. Yeah, they're putting out a bunch of content, but the ad revenue is going to be low. There's no money being made there. You know, and they're not marketing themselves well because there's so many videos that are just trash. And that it's just, it's, it's impossible for them to do well anymore. But I'm not talking about it. If you're putting out, even if you're putting out two to three videos a day, as long as every video, because every video is going to be different for different people. Some people don't want to listen to men. Some people don't want to listen to women. Some people don't want to watch a video on the black culture. Some people don't want to watch a video on the Irish culture or the white culture. They don't want to watch videos on that. So you, you're going to have different demographics. But my point is, if you're consistently putting up videos and you're sticking with what you're talking about, regardless of people hate you. If you've been making videos for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years... The one thing people aren't going to be able to say about you is he don't even put in the work. Motherfucker, they're not going to say that about you. Even if they hate you, you'll be putting in the work. So I don't believe that if you're being authentic and being true to yourself or being true to what you believe right now, because we all change. But if you're talking about trying to truly help people, you can't be that if you're not consistent and your production value is low. And remember this, production is... A relative, somebody else's production, can, my production can look horrible compared to somebody who has more money than me and has a whole team of people to help them. But my production still should look better than when I started. You know what I mean? It shouldn't still look like I'm sitting in my college dorm room with no mic and a phone <laughs> with a uh, Galaxy S4. I should have done something. So if your production is continuing to go up and you're doing the best that you can, you're doing the best that you can. You know, but that's all based on you. You know, if you're putting in enough effort, you know, if you're putting in enough of, of your time, you know what you're doing. So I don't like when people always talk about the algorithm. Because at the end of the day, if you're good at what you do, you're good at what you do. I have seen content creators I vehemently disagree with, hate them as a content creator. Hate's a strong word. I don't like their content. I don't hate them. I, don't, I hate their content. And they still do well. Even when everybody says they fall off or they're, they're doing horrible, their production value is so high that they still get the views and they can still run the numbers. But most people, when they get demonetized, if they don't really believe in what they're talking about, and this is where I agree with Saya a lot, demonetize a channel and you will see how passionate a person is about their channel. Watch somebody get demonetized and you will see how passionate they truly are. And I'm just being honest. If they get demonetized and they're, they pretty much just disappear, they weren't really getting this shit because that means they were living for the money of it. So you, you, you know who I'm talking about. You see these channels, you get demonetized and they're like, Hey guys, we're not making any money. So we're just going to leave. That motherfucker, those motherfuckers didn't believe what they were talking about. They were in for the money. Then you watch other people who get demonetized and they're, they're growing as strong as ever. They get demonetized and all of a sudden they're working even harder now. They were already working super hard and now that they're demonetized, you ain't seen them miss a step. They get demonetized and it's like they went even harder now because it's like, well, fuck it, I'm demonetized. I'm just going to talk about what I want to talk about now. And I'm going to be just as passionate as I was before. It's like I'm demonetized now, so I ain't got to work. walk on no eggshells. I'm going to say whatever I feel. Those are the people that make a difference. So if you are talking about truth and you are talking about the realness, don't worry about demonetization. Don't worry about all the views. They will come, I promise you. Because if you keep the same passion, yes, YouTube can, like I said, as long as you're not saying stuff that is pure evil, that's going to get your channel terminated, you'll be fine. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about well, if it isn't Russell, man, I ain't seen you in so long, brother. Russell, Russell, man, it's been eight, eight, nine months since I last saw you. Have you gotten better? I remember you were real down on yourself before. But so was I, so to be fair. Um, Option said, that reminds me a lot of Sneeko and how he used to be more creative and how he's fallen into his current trap. And that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up. I'll bring this back in. Things that happen with certain creators. 
is they're young. And sometimes young, the youth is wasted on the young. Because, and I'm not saying I'm smart because I'm still dumb. But if I could take my same mindset now and put it in my 20-year-old body, oh, I'd be way further along in life right now. It's just you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fall into beliefs. I can't tell you how many arguments I've gotten into, how many friends I lost because my ego was too much. That that content creator you're talking about, his ego just got too big. I don't, I'm, but I don't kill him for that because he's young. He's a, he's a young man that got famous at 20, at least social media famous. I don't expect people who are young to deal with fame right. It's impossible. If you had given me a million dollars and a million subs at 20 years old, boy, I'd have been fucked. There'd have been a lot of drinking, a lot of drugging, and a lot of women. That'd have been the only thing that would have been happening to me. I would have been, and I'm being honest right now, I would have been picking up prostitutes. I'd have been going to strip clubs. I was too much of a, I was too much of an addict to get that much money at that time. Especially if I'm getting attention from people I can't see. Oh, it'd have been horrible. I probably. I'd probably be dead. <laughs> I don't even know. I probably had done so many drugs. I'm just being honest. So I don't kill him for that. He he's not dead. He still has a chance. He just needs to he just needs to take a break and get himself together. Because he's so young, he's so impressionable that he gets caught up in all of that. But anyway. Women should be hypergamous. It's a good thing. Damn right. Fit Zula Gullah. 50-50 is good. But see, a dude by the name of Zula Gullah will never be the CEO of Apple. Those names, those, no offense, Zula, but you don't see Zula Gullah uh, in Fortune, Forbes, The Economist. You don't see these kind of names. And you certainly don't, when you get up around men who run these kind of things, they don't think in terms of 50-50. Let's get into this thing. I'm going to piss some people off. You know what, what it pisses people off? I'm going to tell you why it pisses people off. Because the truth hurts. The truth hurts. Let's get started. Let's get started. Ladies, get you a glass of wine. Get you a glass of wine. Sit back and something. Because gentlemen... It's time, it is time, it is time. Are we ready? Are we ready? Good. Black men, it's time to grow up. Time to grow up. Time to grow up. Before you get triggered, I need you to ask yourself some questions. Go down to the comment section. Go down to the description of the video. It's not your fault how the world is, but it is your responsibility for you. Gentlemen, where do you rank amongst men? We're not going to we're not going to talk about men in comparison to women in this stream. Any man, any male that comes in talking about what a man should do because of what a woman does. I want you guys to call him male. Any man that comes in and says, okay, hot lips, CIA men, hit squad, Blake, blue, any male that comes in our, in our sacred space of high achievers, earners, power brokers, and movers and shakers coming in talking about, well, why should I have to do 50-50 if a woman does any, any talk like that? I just want you to type male every time you see it in big letters, male. Where do you rank amongst men? All men, not black men, not Ados black men. I mean, all men. Where do you rank? Not not your cousin, not your uncle, not your grandpa on him. Where do you rank? 
Sorry that I had Science Peaks on there. That's Kevin Samuels. So Kevin Samuels, that video is called Men Should Pay for Everything. Now, the reason I bring that up is because that part he just said has fucked me up. I watched that video a long time ago. <clears throat> it's one of the reasons, and I thought about that video, and I've watched it many times since then, but it's one of the reasons I came back to YouTube and came back to content creation. Because the one way you can be a great content creator is standing up in front of people and just showing who you are, whether you fucked up or you did bad. I fucked up, I showed back up. Running away doesn't doesn't do you any favors. And I, content creation to me is, is much bigger than just getting on this camera and talking to YouTube. I feel like I have a real draw to really help people, and this is the best way I can do it, at least right now. I do want to do public speaking and everything one day. I'm just not there yet. You know, I still want to get in, um, I still want to do a lot better with other things before I get there. But I want to be a person when I do step on stage, it's a person you can, I have credibility and respect. But the part he talks about that's so good is where do you rank amongst men, right? Ask yourself for the content creator. And don't, well, don't worry about sub counts. Don't worry about just views. I'm talking about production value. When you watch another person's video and you're a content creator, ask yourself this. Where do I rank amongst it, the other content creators? And I want you to use your own ranking system. Whatever ranking system you want to use, just be as honest as you can. Go find the content creators you love or content creators who make content similar to yours. I got to compare my live streams to other live streamers. I don't really compare myself to other people who make videos because we're different people. But I compare myself to other live streamers. How do they do it? You notice one of the things I did is I took out the headphones. I've been wearing these headphones right here. For a long time. I wore these headphones a long time. They're all beat up now. Um, even the clothes I wear, I care about. Now, I used to wear a tie and a shirt. But now I'll be like, I already told you that. You already know what happened. But I still want to, you know, still have some better hoodies. I like the hoodie. I like the shirt I wore yesterday. But I want to see, like, okay. I noticed some streamers, they use better mics. Some streamers, they don't have headphones in their ears. One of the reasons I took mine out is because they do it. It doesn't look right with the kind of streams I do. If you're a gamer, it works perfect. If you're a Twitch streamer who just gets in front of just gets in front of a camera and you don't talk about anything really in particular, you're just a, a just chatter. You just get up there and say, What's up guys? Today we're gonna watch some YouTube videos, gonna react to some shit and and if you're a girl doing the same thing, hey guys, I'm gonna get on here and react to some shit. Or if you're a girl who's a thought. Hey guys, we're gonna get on here and react to some shit, but my booty's gonna be out too. And if you're a guy who just likes to rage all the time and clickbait, not clickbait, but click form, clip form. Hey guys, we're gonna get on here and watch some shit and bang! Get him the fuck out of here! You wanna do all that extra bullshit? Fine, I don't care. I don't care what you do. Like I said, whatever the people like, it'll be here years from now. Okay? And that has to be the goal for me. I don't want to be here for a short time. I want to be here for a long time. I want to look back on all my videos and be like, yeah. You know, and I have all my YouTube videos backed up. So if YouTube disappears, which I don't see that happening because Google's not letting go of this billion dollar industry. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, it's like I still have all my content backed up, ready to go. So I can look back on my life one day and be like, wow. You know, I've changed a lot. And I helped a lot of people or... Damn, I wish I wasn't that way back then. But if you don't sit back and compare yourself, rank yourself to other content creators, you're never going to get anywhere. That is exactly why I just said what I just said earlier about doing this for fun. You can't, it can't be, it just made me so frustrated. Guys, you can have fun and show your work. Okay. But if you're not even willing to rank yourself against other live streamers or other content creators, it's pathetic. It's just another way to be lazy. Let's be what it, let's call it what it is. Do you people who want to just fly by the seat of your pants or you just want to go with the wind and just have a carefree life? Motherfuckers, y'all won't do anything in this world. Because the people who are the movers and shakers, they, 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 they push and they fall into ruts. They go through hard times. They get pissed off. They get sad. They get mad. They don't try to keep this facade of, I'm just going to do stuff that makes me happy and nothing else. That don't, don't work. You need to have fucking emotions in this stuff. You need to get sad. You need to get pissed off. You need to look yourself in the mirror one day and say, like, damn it. 
We got to do better, damn it. Because that's how you be. A, that's how you really help people. But if you just want to fly and just be like, I don't care about anything. I don't care what my videos look like. I don't care what I wear. I don't care how I present myself. It's like, come on, man. I mean, damn it. How are you going to help people? Because remember, you're not competing with some guy who's sitting on the couch eating chips. You're not competing with him. You're competing with the people who are. Come on, babe. You're competing with the guy. You're competing with the woman who is pushing whatever agenda on people. Whether that be pushing stuff on the little kids. Whether you're pushing stuff onto adults. They're pushing people to be a certain sexuality. They're pushing people to believe a certain way. They want to go to war. Whatever you believe that's wrong, there are people out there who are completely against you. And guess what? You know why people listen to them and not you? Because motherfucker, you, all you do is get on the keyboard... And say bullshit, and nobody knows who you are because your name is user1582. Because you act like you don't care. But it's just another way of saying, I'm lazy. Just call it what it is. Just call it what it is. And if... You are competing against the best of the best. For you guys who think that it's only the good people in this world that have these platforms and are big and huge and um, have the production value, if you don't think there are evil people out there who know that the only way that they can get through to people is production value, it, they have to make it look good. I know a lot of y'all always watching movies and stuff like that and saying, this is shit, but you watched it. And guess what? It may have not got to you, but guess who it did get to? Someone else. Because if, even if you hated the movie or you hated whatever you were watching and you thought it was shit, it was good enough to watch. And it, whatever message they wanted to get across, they can get it across to somebody. If y'all don't start opening y'all's eyes and realizing that they're always somebody trying to push something on somebody, then you're missing the point. And if you really think that whatever you're doing, and I'm really only speaking to content creators, but I, if you think of the content creator, you can just blaze by and it's just going to happen for you and you don't have to put in the work. You don't have to struggle a little bit. You may not, your bills not might get paid perfectly. You may struggle for a few years, few years before you see any fucking thing. You don't think you might have to work a full-time job while being a full-time YouTuber and trying to keep up the production value and try to put out videos and try to stick to your, and have to do research and have to stick to everything. You're crazy. The hardest working people will all, oh boy, this is about to hit some shit. Woo! We in it tonight. If you don't think hard work is always going to rise to the top, you're tripping. People who work hard, good or bad, and I want y'all to remember that part, good or bad. Because, listen, just because somebody is doing horrible things today doesn't mean that their life can't drastically change and they turn their life around. But one thing that won't, one thing that will still put them above you is that they worked hard. And if, they're a good, if they get their life turned around and they still work hard, you're fucked. And now you're not going to have no excuse for where they are. But people, when they see people who work hard, they always think there's something evil about them. They do. Just because you can't do it. When somebody gets out there and they see somebody who's a great football player or a great rapper or a great artist or a great hip-hop artist, country artist, pop artist. They see all these people who are great artists. In some field or whatever it is, somebody you work with at your local McDonald's, they're the manager above you. Y'all always hate on those kind of people because they're like, oh my God, it's because um, maybe they worship the devil or, but, excuse me, <laughs> it's water. They worship the devil. They're just evil. They're disgusting. Listen, do I think there are people out here or who are really um, evil? Of course I do. But do I think it's every person that's better than you? No. It can't be that if somebody's better than you at something, it's because they're evil. It can't be that. Because, yes, being better at something than somebody is subjective. That's why I say it's important for you to look yourself in the mirror and say, are you giving your best? Okay? For example, let's just stick with artists and then we'll go other analogies. If you put out a song and you knew you half-assed the song and then you see somebody else who you may have put a week into making a song, but then there's another person who really wanted to make this song as good as they could. And they put in two, three, four. To make a song doesn't take that long, guys. But if you see somebody who takes four weeks to get the song 
because they get to certain instruments, they talk to certain people, they spend certain money, they network, they get the right kind of course, the right kind of hook, and they sit down with it every day and they're making a difference. And that song does way better than yours and you're pissed off because you you made the song in one week and didn't even try. <laughs> if you're doing the best you can, don't hate on that. But if you're not doing the best you can, quit hating on other people who are. Just quit hating on the guy at the gym who comes five days a week, really focuses in on his diet, and really trying, who looks better than you. Quit hating on the person who got promoted above you because they were going to the events. They were going to the charity events. They were talking with the managers. They were learning. They were putting in extra work studying. They were learning other stuff that you just flat out don't feel like you got time for because you want to spend more time at home playing games or you want to spend more time at home watching Netflix. We all got 24 hours in a day. You can try your best to get eight hours a day. Sometimes you're going to get eight hours of sleep. Some days you're going to get five hours of sleep, maybe four. But it's okay. You'll get that time back. You'll get the sleep back because it only takes one day to recover that sleep. But for you people who just want everything to always be perfect, you want to work your eight-hour day, you want to get home, go to sleep at the perfect time, and you just expect to never have to put any effort in to get anywhere, you're fucked. You're fucked. And the people you deem evil and the people you deem um, disgusting or people you can't stand, they're always going to be better than you. And they're all people are going to always listen to them more because you don't put in the work. And people can see it. People will always see it. Where did you rank when you graduated from high school? Were you the valedictorian, the salutatorian? Were you in the top 5%, top 10%? See, Nate Taylor, let me tell you something. Men who rank well know where they rank. They know their numbers. Men who rank well are quick to tell you where they rank. A dude with an 800, a dude with an 800 credit score knows his credit score is 800. A dude with an 800 credit score knows his credit score is 800. <laughs> Am I lying? A dude with a high credit score knows his credit score. A dude with a low credit score don't know. Where do you rank up gunks men? All men. Because here's the reality of it. Black men, you're not special. We're not special. At the end of the day, there is a ranking. Everyone has to deal with prejudice. Everyone has to deal with some sort of ism. The goal of any man is to make yourself powerful enough to where it does not affect you. Like it or not, for the guys who are, for the 36 guys who this triggered, you have no power. That's the, that's the extent of your power, hitting a dislike button. What do you rank amongst men? Well, see, if you're already in the average or below average amongst all men, and I mean your economic ranking, your academic ranking, your resume, hashtag show you work. Why do I say show your work? Because that, that, that cuts through all the fluff. How old are you? You're 40 years old and your resume is paper thin, you rank low. I said this on the breakdown, a woman's perspective. This is the reason so many black men running around talking about game and, 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 and sex when they pass 35, because that's all you got. You have nothing else that manhood worldwide counts. That's all you got. And that's your problem. Are you bold? Obviously you're not. Average or below average men are not bold. And the only problem is this. Understand something. I'm directing this broadcast to guys who want to be in the top 10% of men. If you want to be average, cool, no heat, no judgment, but I'm an image consultant, personal and corporate image consultant, life coach. I have average people have no use for what I do, nor do they have use for a stockbroker. Uh, an attorney or retainer, a PR firm, corporate accountants, no heat, no judgment. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, 
be a business owner, which really a lot of you guys want free money. You don't want to work, but we're going to get into that. See, the entrepreneur is the buzzword of the day. And you really, a lot of guys are entrepreneurs. You want free money. Are you bold? Answer that question for yourself. How many, how many men in, how many men in here can say they are bold men? Bold men. If you are a bold man, type bold in big letters. If you are truly a bold man, but I'm going to test it. Are you ambitious? I wanted to talk about that ambitious thing. But before we talk about that, I wanted him to talk about, you know, being bold. I want y'all to notice something about Kevin. Have y'all even, have y'all seen, see when you're good at something, it's hard to replicate. Have y'all seen anybody who live stream who can replicate him? I've seen a lot of good looking brothers. I've seen a lot of good... Look at people who have got on the camera, had a tie on. I don't see a lot of suits, but I see ties. Has anybody been able to replicate what Kevin did? No. You know why? One, he was confident in what he did. And two, it takes a lot to do what he did. Yeah, sometimes he came off arrogant, and he even admits when he was wrong. But it's hard to do something like he did. It's hard to be bold and come out there and say what you got to say. See, this is the same message... And I think it's important for myself, once again. Sorry to bring it to me, but, you know, I like to always point out my own flaws. So, you know, I, I so I can, it's, it's easier for me to talk from experience. I, for me, and it, this may sound silly, and maybe, it, maybe I'm wrong here. I do think it took a lot. It still takes a lot for me to come on camera. And I won't say it's bold, but I will say it's taking a chance because I'm, I, Coming back and still being fat, it was the hardest fucking thing I had to do. But I was willing to take that chance. And I even admit it, had to come back on camera and say I was scared to death to come back. But I think it's, it's better for me to get on this camera and just say, hey guys, I'm fat, I'm out of control, let's do this together. I'm going to do this the best on camera. I'm still going to speak about stuff I want to speak about. I know people always want to talk, me want me to talk about weight loss and all that shit, I'm just not going to do it. But that doesn't mean I'm never going to bring it up. But I am ambitious. Now, the word ambitious can mean a lot of different things. And everybody's ambitious in different areas. But you do got to ask yourself as a content creator, are you ambitious? Now, this is the tough part. When it comes to being ambitious, I think what people think about ambitious is that means they have dreams. Now, you have goals. Mm, no, that's not really ambitious because everybody has dreams and goals. Everybody. I don't know anybody who's like, I have no dreams and goals. I want to do nothing in life. <laughs> we all have dreams and goals. But a person who's ambitious is damn near going to do everything they can to get where they got to get. That means if they realize that the only way that they could live stream or something like that, and they realize, hey, I got to live for stuff. For certain people, who especially who are just chatters, yeah, you're gonna have to put in eight hour live streams. I don't care how much sleep you get, you better get a. You might have to get a part time job, because <laughs> five days a week, forty of your hours going to live streaming, and the other thirty you're gonna have to do to try to keep yourself afloat until the money comes in, and you may struggle for a couple of years. That to me is somebody who's ambitious. That's somebody who's saying, "Fuck it, I ain't got it now, but hey, maybe two, three years from now, I can." That can happen for live streaming. But it's gonna be different for somebody who wants to be a corporate exec, somebody who want to work in a, be a CEO of a multi-million or a multi-billion dollar company, somebody who wants to get there, that's going to be a 20 year project. But that's somebody who's ambitious is like, hell, fuck it. I know I got to work right here, right now. I got to answer these phones. But one day I want to run this whole bitch and I don't want to run just this one. I want to run everyone in my state. Okay. You want to run every call center in your state for that company? That's you may be talking about 10 years, 15 years. That's somebody who's ambitious. Consecration, it may happen a little bit faster because social media is so, you know. Um, but for example, though, it may be completely different for someone else. I like to talk about people like Candace Owens, just because I feel like she does a very good job of what she does. To get where she got, she's been doing that since she was 20. It's been 14 years for her to get where she is. So where she could be a person who even after getting fired from her job still was able to garner just as many views just she still holds just as much attention when you hear candace owens you know who she is 
It, got, it took her 14 years to get there. I mean, she's been known for the last five, six years heavily. But I'm saying it still took her 14 years to get to this point where she could talk about whatever she wants to talk about and people still listen. She can do the research she can and people still listen. People still watch her. You, she's almost unstoppable. And this is just the beginning. She's only 34. Well, she's 35 now. You know what I'm saying? Ambition means you're probably going to have to give up a bunch of shit. A bunch of things. You think you got to spend time with your family and friends all day and be ambitious? Bro, nope. You, <laughs> you're going to be spending time in your craft most days. You know, you're going to be working, and when you're not working, you're working on whatever your craft is. Or if your work is your craft, you are going to be putting in those 60, 70 hour weeks because it means that much to you. Okay? Now, there's some things that being ambitious, like some people may, um, some things when you're ambitious, it won't get you any further, any faster. It's hard to be ambitious in school because no matter how fast, no matter how ambitious you are, all you can do is put in the hours to get the grades, but you're not going to graduate any faster. <laughs> it is what it is. You can only take so many hours before it's just too much, you know, but I'm talking about when you're out of university, oh man. Then you get ambitious again. Then you want to go from. I'm just trying to think of a common place. Then you get to go from being your cashier at Walmart to, like I said before, being a manager, area manager, regional manager, president. If you're a nurse, you can go from CNA to an LPN to RN to BSN to a nurse educator if you want to get that far, or a CRNA or a nurse practitioner. From there to your DNP. That's being ambitious because you're going to have to give up a lot of shit to do all that. You're going to. As a content creator. I'm not talking about the content creators. And just like Kevin said, and, I, and I, I, it's hard for me to say this because I'm not where Kevin is or even close to what I'm about to say. But I'm really speaking to the, the guys who may make it. If you want to be one of those top 10% content creators... And I'm not talking about just subs and views. You know what I mean? Because you don't have to have that many, but you know where you rank. Just like he said earlier, you know where you rank. You know if you're one of those top creators. If you're trying to be one of those top creators, then you're going to have to put in work. You're going to have to put in way more work than everybody you watch. And here's another thing. And here's the harder thing about content creation. Because every platform is different. If you're a Twitch streamer, I can't speak to that. But I could speak to, I could speak to, I could speak to that. I could speak to, if you're going to be a live streamer on YouTube, we have to be more topic based. We, it's, You can't be a YouTuber and just hop on and not talk about anything. There's very few that can do that. I speed was one of the few ones that because he was so young he was so I I show speed was such a different content creator because he was what 16 when he started so he didn't have that box you know what I mean he didn't have that those manners no offense towards him but he he just he was consumed by whatever the world wanted him to do whether that's acting crazy in front of girls barking and all that kind of stuff stuff that some a grown man isn't going to do I'm a grown man I'm not going to get on here <laughs> even though I just did that I'm not going to do that Every time. It's just not something that I, I still have a profession that I have in my actual life. And so when people, if they ever see me, I don't want to be on there barking like a dog because that's not who I am. <clears throat> However, because we're so topic based, you better start talking about shit that you don't want to talk about. You better start learning about shit you don't want to talk about. I used to be so anti learning all this new slang that got the uh, learning about the thoughts, learning about hot two. I didn't enjoy that. Watching these twenty v ones, this the stupid balloon show. I didn't want to learn about any of that stuff. But I realized that if you want to reach the people, you better talk about these things because this is what the people watch. I can't talk about obscure things. Get on here and say, well, let's talk about the history of the Catholic Church. And that's not going to help anybody right now. That'll be good for people who want to learn about the history of the Catholic Church. But I can't get on here and talk about that every day of the week. I can't get on here and talk about Catholicism. 
if I want to reach the people, I got to know what I'm talking about. So I need to be able to get on here and talk about Twitch Thoughts. I need to get on here and talk about OnlyFans. I need to get on here and talk about 20v1. I need to talk about the balloon show. I need to talk about the sexualization of black women. I need to talk about the sexualization of black men. I need to talk about how sometimes <clears throat> they're, the white people, for some reason, get pushed to the side because they're just not colored. I need to talk about all that kind of stuff. Okay? I need to talk about stuff that's uncomfortable, but I also need to talk about the goofy stuff. The, the TikTok trends, the Sephora's, even though I'm a man, I can still, I still need to be able to talk about Sephora's, crumble cookies, stuff that I really don't care about, but it's important. I need to be able to sit my ass down and be like, what can I learn from this? I watch other YouTubers. That's why sometimes you see me put women YouTubers on here. Even though I'm a man, I still watch stuff that women talk about because it's important because they're human beings. Okay. I don't like. I, I never tried to be that consecrated. It's got to be completely red pilled, and you be like, "I'm only going to talk about men and men only." No, that 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 don't let you fail, because you got to be able to talk about yourself against yourself. You need to talk about what other communities are struggling with. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about all this stuff that I stuff stuff I don't even understand. Every single day, you got to be able to do the research. Every single day, you got to know what these kids are talking about. That's also very hard because I don't care about what kids think most times. But who is getting the most manipulated? Who is the most impressionable? When you hear the evil stuff that comes out of people's mouths, who are they trying to influence most of the time? The kids. And I know we're so quick to say, man, kids are just stupid. They are the ones. They are the next generation. No matter how you slice it, if we don't try to see what's being talked to the kids then we can't go anywhere even though i try to avoid making my content about children i still learn about what is being taught to the kids that way if a child does watch me for some odd reason they can hear what i have to say because i'm still an adult at the end of the day and the kids learn from us adults and i got to teach them about hey remember if an adult tries to be friends with you there's something wrong with that if adults are trying to hang out with you there's something wrong with that if an adult is talking to you about your sexuality or talking about your genitals, there's something wrong with that. If they're inviting you to dating shows and telling you to talk about women a certain way, there's something wrong with that. If they're a grown man telling you to look at girls' booties and say God and get caught up in the pornography world, there's something wrong with that. I'm not afraid to say that. because I, And to be honest with you, when I talk like that, I get called gay all the time. I've been called gay since I was a kid. And they're not calling me gay for the LGBTQ stuff. They're saying that I'm soft. They're saying I'm weird. When they, when, you know, when people use that moniker, they use it for a certain reason. They're not saying that I'm gay as in I like men. They're really trying to say that I'm gay as in I'm soft, I'm weak, I'm not a man. That's what they mean when they say it. They're trying to say it in a derogatory form, not in the actual form of what it means. But I've never quit on that. Never quit on that. Because I know what pornography does to a young man. I know how evil it is. And so I've always tried to make sure my content at least talked about it. Because I know the young men, you see what they're doing to our young men. And they're not only making the young men like pornography, they're making our men more feminine. Because that's the cool thing to do. I remember when I was growing up, being feminine was jacked up. I used to get made fun of all the time because I was a little feminine. Now being fit, not being any what any way being masculine at all is a problem. Now they want you to be as feminine as possible because they want weaker men. But see, you got to talk about these things. And I, I remember somebody said this the other day. And that's why they, yeah, yeah. I remember somebody said this the other day in my comment section. It was from a video I made like 10 months ago. If y'all remember, I made a video I was talking to um, the black women. And I, 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 I took a step out there. And I was talking to women and they were talking about how every time they get on there, they say black man ain't ish. You, you've heard it a lot. And I remember somebody putting in the comment saying, there's no helping black women. Just let them go. And I thought to myself, maybe they're right. And I've even said to myself, I don't want to just give up on all this bullshit. Can't do that. There always needs to be one voice. Okay. You need to pick, if you're a content creator, you need to pick what you're, you need to pick your lane. Pick something you at least have some experience in and go for it. You can't be in everything. It's very hard to be diverse in everything. You can try. That's why I, I pick topics here and there that I can at least speak on. But I don't know everything. 
right? You don't either. But if you could pick a lane, and my lane right now is mainly just helping people understand that life goes on. You can't succeed. You can't do all these things. But at the same time, you're going to have to put in work if you really want to make a change. But my real fight is good and evil. It's really my fight. And the good thing with that good and evil is that I can really go to a bunch of different topics and find the evil in it and I can find the good in it. I can always do that. But what I want to say is some people find a lane in other stuff like overconsumption, consumerism, shopping for too much makeup, the crumb, the uh, crumble cookies, young girls putting on makeup and stuff like that. There is plenty of women who do great jobs with that. And that's more their lane. I can't talk about women as that easily because I have no idea what it's like to overconsume makeup. I have no idea what it's like to for Sephora or to be part of Sheen. I don't get that. But I can talk to men about I know what it feels like to be. It feel like you're a loser. I know what it feels like to be lazy. I know what it feels like to want to provide for your family. I can do all that kind of stuff. So I do try to stick with my lane. But I can speak to other stuff because I've worked with a lot of women. I can talk from perspectives, but I can't talk about the makeup and stuff, stuff that's physical. I don't know anything about that. So, and I can tell you about baby mamas. I know a lot of them. I know about what it's like to not be married. I know what it's like to be married. I, I, you know what I mean? I just, I know what it's like in all these different dimensions. I watch unmarried couples and, you know, I'm always trying to stay in my lane. But that's so important to do those kind of things. But you got to do it. And you got to push hard. Don't be timid. Don't be scared. You're going to get hate comments. Fuck them. I don't read comments. I read my live stream. And once this camera goes off, I do not go back through videos and look at the comment section because I don't give a damn. Other people, I don't care if they comment, don't comment. I don't care if people want to exchange ideas and talk to each other in the comments. But if you expect me to come down there, it's not going to happen. Baby, I got to move forward. I've already thinking about the next video. I'm already thinking about what I got to talk about. And then I got to think about my life and my family and my wife when I get off this camera. But to be ambitious means you're going to have to give up a lot of shit. You know how much time I've had to give up being with my family to make sure I can do this YouTube stuff when it's not paying me really anything? You know how much time I've had to spend doing research and stuff? You know how much time I have to spend at work to make sure everything is good? And I'm not complaining. All I'm saying is that to be ambitious, and I, and I tell this to women, when women say they want to be ambitious, I mean that when women say they want to be with a man who's ambitious, they think they're talking about a man who's making a lot of money right now. And they want to be at home every day rubbing their feet. They want a man who makes a lot of money but has all the time in the world to be home. No, an ambitious man is always looking, okay, I'm not trying to be a boss at my job. I'm trying to own the whole fucking street. I'm trying to own part of the city. I'm not when I want I'm gonna be doing this, baby, until I'm 60, 70. I'm gonna do this until my body says no more. That's a different kind of ambition. And that's why I think some people will take content creation, not saying that life can't change and you have to get out of it. But people who are ambitious in content creation, it doesn't matter what the numbers say. They'll be here 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. When YouTube is 30 years old, they'll still be here right here with a thousand subs. Not give a fuck. That's bad, but you know what I mean. All right, let's watch a little bit more. See, you can't be ambitious and average. You cannot be ambitious and stay average. I'm sorry. You cannot be ambitious and stay average. Brandon B, 33, 63, and six figures. Okay. But there's more. But there's so much more. There is so much more. That's why this is going to trigger a lot of people. For the guys who come in and do that, I need you to say where you rank amongst men. All men, not just black men. Six figures will get you in the top 15% on average. To be in the top 10%, you need $128,000. I don't make the math. That's $128,000 in Dallas, Atlanta, Houston. If you're on New York City, LA, the Bay Area, multiply that by three.
are you bold are you ambitious but here's the last part are you generous yes generous the world abhors cheap men and it's been this has been going around a lot that you know a certain segment of men have been have been tagged as cheap fill in the blank The research is in, man. The data is in. Generous males have better outcomes. And generous men are more are perceived as being more sexually attractive. So, if you're a generous man by nature, you're going to be perceived by women as more sexually attractive. But it has to be true generosity. It can't be tit for tat. It can't be uh well keep on going or are you cheap what's the opposite of bold bland the opposite of bold is bland are you ambitious what's the opposite of ambitious What's the opposite of ambitious? Let's use the word. Let's go find it. What's the opposite of what's the opposite of ambitious? What's the opposite of bold? Let's get that right. Timid. The opposite of bold is timid. That's one of the I spoke about this the other day. Generosity. Now, I'm only talking to content creators. I'm not going to talk to you guys who don't make content. But there's an important thing that Kevin says later in this uh, thing. When he talks about sometimes you got to pay for um, things to get further in life. Sometimes you got to give up money. Sometimes you have to pay for coaching. You got to be willing to spend money to improve your life. You can't expect it just to come to you because you, you don't know everything. Sometimes you got to pay for stuff. And so... I think it's very important if you're a content creator to support other content creators. If you don't have the money, then you can support in way of watching videos, liking the videos, and stuff that's free. Now, I'll say something, and I probably won't say this again, but just because I'm not that many people here, but this is going to go into the video. <laughs> One important thing about giving back is every single month I try to give 10% of my check to some kind of charity or I give it to other content creators. I always take 10% of my check and I take all that money and all I do is either buy merch, which y'all will probably see more of. I buy merch. I cash app people who have cash apps in their bios and stuff like that. If I can't do it that way, I go to the Patreon and I just stay subscribed for however how long. Most Patreons are only five bucks a month anyway. And so instead of spending that money on something else that I could use, now if I if I need it out, I'll use it there. But that that goes into business expenses. That's why I say 10%. Just like you tithe at church, that's what I do. I use tithing to give back to the community, my own community here, give back to content creators who have really been helping me along. And I try to, like I said, buy some merch or maybe subscribe to a Patreon. And the good thing is that 10%, I wipe it away. It's all gone. That's all it's for. So it's not like it's something I feel like I'm giving up. It's something I, I got to do. That's what you got to do with your money. I think if you really want to be a good content creator and you really want to help people, the best way to also move yourself up is instead of and I know that we need each other. We got to network in the content creation. But instead of always being like, hey, do you want to collab? Hey, do you want to work together? How about you support them for a few months before you do that? And here's the thing. I want to say this one more time. People, <laughs> y'all are so afraid that y'all are going to die that a few months to y'all feel like a few years. Dude, if you're going to die tomorrow, you're going to die tomorrow. But you're going to have to start seeing time as much bigger than just a month. You're going to have to be like, hey, it may be six months before that I should even ask this person to even consider working with me. After six months of supporting them, six months of buying 
maybe buying merch or supporting them on Patreon or going to their streams, being active, being engaging. It may be six months, a year, but you need to do something before you just go out to content creators and be like, hey, um, you, do you want to come watch my channel? This is the same thing I say about brand deals. I'm not saying don't go out there and look for brand deals. I'm not saying don't go out there and look for sponsorships. But at the same time, make yourself valuable. You know, if you really want to work with a company, buy their stuff. You know, if I said, hey, I want to go work with Elgato or Logitech, at least I bought their stuff first. I didn't go ask it for free cameras. And then say, hey, can you give me a free stream deck? I didn't do all that. <laughs> buy their stuff first. Show that you really support them. That way, if they ever do decide to sponsor you or they ever do say, hey, let's work together, you could be like, hell yeah, I already buy your stuff. They already know you buy their stuff. And of course, they want to work with you because they see that you're actually supporting them as a company. So, of course, then they want to work with you. It'll be a much better relationship than, hey, uh, we want to give you free stuff. I know you never know who we are or anything about us, but, you know, <laughs> it's just turned into a terrible relationship. So, if you want to work with a certain company, prove your value, prove your hard work, show that you're with it, and quit asking for free shit all the time. Quit asking for free collabs. And I say this, and I'll say it again. Now, I'm not saying, will I ever reach out for a brand deal or something like that? I don't see that happening for me because I'm a live streamer for the most part, so there's nobody I really want to work with. But I'm saying if there was somebody I want to work with, I would first say this, hey, let me let me try your stuff first. You know what I mean? It's going to take a lot for me to look. So if a new company says, hey, we want you to try our mic, it's going to take a lot for me. To, I'm not just going to choose it. I'm going to use it. Because I've been using this mic for a very long time, and I like it. I like my setup. I like all the stuff I got. I like my monitors. I like the, the devices I have right now. But I would rather prove my work, worth than to just expect things to come to me. That's what we got to do more of. And I promise you, it's like he said, if you're generous, maybe not everybody will see it. But I promise you, that generosity will take you far as fuck. Because when you do, if your time ever comes and you get the money or you get the subs or you get the views, you get the engagement... Boy, it's going to come so easy for you because when you finally get it and you're finally make it, you're going to be the person going to live streams and being like, you're going to be doing what uh, Moist Critical has done. You're going to be just giving away, either giving away money or giving money, just donating to random people on streams. And sometimes you won't even record it. You won't say anything. You'll just go to random streams on your own free time and just be like, hey, donating. And, so, and you know what? I don't have no problem if you do it anonymously or if you do it with your actual name. Because at the end of the day, it may be important for them to know it was you. Because if you're a bigger YouTuber or a bigger streamer, they're gonna feel they're gonna feel differently to know that you notice them. So you may want to use your actual name. Do it anonymously, may not be pushing. They may be having a bad day, they may be really trying to tough it out, and they see your name pop up and say, Hey man, keep it going. That's gonna fuck them up. I'm not saying you're anybody special, but at the end of the day, it still can inspire somebody. If Denzel Washington came up to me one day and said, hey, Trey, I see what you're doing. Keep it up. That means something. That doesn't mean you have to idolize the person or anything like that. But sometimes you need that boost. That's what we're here for. Human, We're here for relationships and communication and helping each other. So, yeah, if you ever get so when you get to that point and you got money like that, it'll be nothing for you to be generous because it's already here. It's not manufactured it's not superficial you really went to go help somebody because it really meant something to you because you remember being that motherfucker who needed the help and you saw how it changed your life that's the one thing also about being a content creator and that's it's the part that sucks and the part that's good if you're already yourself and you're already putting out great content and you're just not getting the views and the subs if the day ever rarely comes and you blow up or somebody shouts you out and it just gives you that exponential growth, you'll be ready for it because you already know how to put out good content. You already know how to make good videos and you won't feel the pressure. You're just going to keep doing what you're doing, whether the numbers continue to go up or not. If somebody's big enough to notice you and say, I got to shout this person out for what they're doing, it can blow you up and you'll be ready for the moment. That's what opportunity is. It's when luck meets preparation. It's when you get a little bit of luck that one YouTuber goes, hey, I, I fuck with this guy or I fuck with this girl. Bam! Next thing you know, your channel is gone, taken off, and people still watch you because, guess what? You're already there. Kevin Samuels, he was already a decent-sized YouTuber, but you know what blew him up? World Hip... Uh, what is it called? World Hip Hop. Or Hip Hop Star, whatever the name is. A World Star, sorry. World Star. 
But by, when it blew him up, did he really change anything? No, he kept being himself. But once the eyes got on, it just kept going. It just kept going. He didn't have to change much because he was already in that. By the time he got there, he had already had to. He was already wearing suits. He was. He already dressed like that anyway. He already had the setup. He had already got the call-in show. He had already been practicing. By the time it came, it was time. It can happen for you. So when your moment comes, give back. Give while you can now. Even if you can only go to a stream and give somebody five bucks, go find somebody who's a streamer. Or find somebody who's a content creator that you like and go support them. If I'm talking to content creators right now. If you're a content creator yourself, go support other content creators. That shit will add up. Guys, evil, evil isn't the only thing that works. I know... I'm going to start being a little bit honest. We're a little bit deeper, okay? We're a little bit deeper right now. We're deep into the, the video. The devil will have you believe that only evil works. Satan will have you believe that evil is the only thing that works. That you've got to be crazy. That you've got to prank people. That you've got to show your ass. It doesn't have to be that. You can do good in the world. And it will come back to you. Don't think that you have to be this crazy person. You have to do all these things that are disgusting just, for, just so you can get notoriety, and then you'll go back to being good. No, it doesn't work that way. Start off doing what you believe in, and it will work out. I don't know what that means. Guys, I don't know what that means. But don't, set a, don't set a cap on yourself like, oh, if I get a million subs, then no. Be the best content creator you can be, wherever that takes you. But whatever you do, be consistent. Do it because you love it. But also put in the work. Treat it like you would your job. You want to be the best content creator you can, I want you to treat YouTube, I want you to treat Twitch or Kick or whatever you're on, treat it like, damn it, that you're getting paid a lot. I'm dead ass serious. Even though you may not have the money to push your production value up, treat it like you're getting paid to do it. And that if you don't do a good job, you are going to get fired. I'm serious. Come on, guys. Even if you know, we all know you can't necessarily get fired, but I want you to do the job like at any second this can go away. Do the job like you're getting paid. Whatever your dream payment is, whatever you think is enough, pretend you're getting paid that. And then work hard and talk like you mean it. Don't get on here and bullshit. I got no problem with people who just chat. But have a purpose. Try to inspire somebody while you're just chatting. Sometimes they may just be sitting there and maybe some people will feel less alone. I'm not a big fan of parasocial stuff. But damn it, sometimes people don't have friends. It just is what it is. Sometimes there are just some people in this world, they don't have no friends, even in their adulthood, their adult life. Maybe they work the graveyard shift and they're a security guard. They just ain't got no friends. And you may be the only person who live streams at three in the morning. And you're the only person who's just sitting there, hey guys, hope you're having a good night on your grave shift. You may be the only person they got. So I'm not against that. So if you're a person who just does just chatting, do something for that person. Try to throw in a few little nuggets here and there. But at the end of the day, I said all this stuff to say that content creation can destroy you. For some of you guys, content creation is going to destroy you. Because there's going to be a lot of notoriety that comes with it, especially if you get famous, social media famous. Especially if you start getting all views and money starts coming to part of it. Some of you guys are going to crack and fall and it's going to burn you to the ground. But learn from it. Get up. Get the ashes off you and get back to it. And for some of you guys, you've already been burned by social media. You've already gotten back up and now's your time to shine. Go out to be the best content creator you can be. Don't find out where you rank. Try to keep up the best you can. And I don't mean with the views. I don't mean with the subs. You find out what you feel is the most important aspect of your content creation and try your best to be the best and do your best. And that's all.